stick. So this is a book called Make It Stick that um, just talks about ways that we can help that learning maybe go a little bit deeper, stick around a little bit longer so that learning is there when they need it um, in the update world. Um, we don't want it to be just things that they, they learn, they know it, they write a test, and then they forget about it. So the solution to that um, is, uh, we feel, spiraling. Um, we're both math LSTs. Every school uh, has a grade nine math LST. And so this is a journey that we've been on over the last year and a half. It's been uh, really exciting. We've learned a ton. It's been a lot of fun. And um, we, we're learning how to make our students learning go deeper. So um, I'll kind of walk through some of the main things of what spiraling is and then hopefully it kind of makes sense just to give you a little bit of background about where we're coming from with the digital tools that we use. Um, so the curriculum says, um, curriculum expectations say by the end of the course a student will demonstrate these particular uh, skills or um, expectations. Uh, so we want to build on things throughout the course. Students have multiple opportunities to learn, to practice, and to demonstrate these skills. And we, what we care about most about is where they are at the end of the course and what they can do. Um, in math, if you think back to your own math classes or if you're a math teacher, typically you're doing things in blocked units. So where you're doing a unit on a particular topic, then you do a unit on the next one. So, and, then you, and then you don't really necessarily, maybe a little bit, but you don't necessarily come back to that previous topic until you do course review at the end and they write an exam. Um, so we want to kind of mix things up a little bit uh, so that we're giving those multiple opportunities. Uh, we're using engaging rich problems that get at a whole bunch of different expectations at the same time. So it's not just focused on one uh, topic necessarily, but we're kind of pulling in from a lot of different skills and, and understandings. Uh, we do this in a collaborative environment and we try to foster this growth mindset, the idea that we're all learning and getting better all the time. And so here's some of the terminology. So we use interleaved, spaced, and very practice with repeated retrieval. So I'll kind of go through what those mean because that relates to the digital tools that we um, have started using. So uh, interleaved, so this, this little image here kind of represents the blocked practice. So where each of these colors would be a unit, different, different topic, one unit at a time. Um, so we're trying to do this interleaved practice where, which is kind of gets to the idea of spiraling. So we kind of go, go through everything, and then we go through everything again, and we go through everything again. We've been doing three cycles, kind of passing through all the topics that we need to cover. Um, so you can kind of see we do them in shorter chunks of time. Sometimes we might do four or five different topics in a single week. We might be doing different things, but we're always coming back around. Each time we come back around, we can go a little bit deeper, we can get a little more complex, we can add another layer. Um, so that's kind of how we structure just our lessons and things like that. Uh, then we want to do spaced practice. So your learning is better if you are allowed to do a little bit of forgetting before you practice it again. So you have to be able to call something back up to memory, figure out how to do it again, practice it again. Every time it takes a little, a little less time to remember it. Um, but that little bit of remembering is good because it makes the learning a little stronger. So um, you could have practice where you, you practice something um, at the end of a lesson maybe, like with traditional homework, and then you have a space, and then you practice it again when you're doing review for the test, and then you have a space and you practice it again when you're doing course review at the very end, you practice that skill again. Um, but instead we want to make those, um, those practice sessions a little more frequent, with maybe a little less space in between, and at the same time we're we're putting in practice from different topics. Um, and so Leanne's gonna talk about how she, do, she uses a Google Form self-check quiz to be able to do some of that spaced practice where you're just um, practicing a skill over and over and over. Uh, and then the other thing we want is very practice. So you could have, uh, and traditionally you would have, you do a lesson where you'd have examples and the homework questions would be very similar to the examples you did in class, and the test questions would be very similar to those homework questions, and the exam questions would be very similar to the test questions, change up the numbers a little bit. 
Um, so the practice looks very similar to the desired learning. Instead, we want to have, uh, this is our desired learning, but we want to have lots of practice opportunities that look very different, um, that aren't just redo a procedure that you were taught, and if you forget the procedure, well, you're kind of out of luck because you have no entry point, you have no way to get into that problem. Um, and so by using the warm-ups that I'm going to show you, that's kind of how we get at this very practice, where we're going to give them a problem that um, is not necessarily something that I've shown them an example for, something that they can collaborate with a partner on, and just try to come up with some ideas. Um, and then we do this all with throughout time. We're going to repeatedly be retrieving, coming back to ideas that we've done before. We're going to have to pull in multiple ideas and topics and skills every time that we do a, a problem. So you can think of if you have something filed away and you're always going back to that file, you're going to know where it is. It's going to, each time it's going to be easier to find that file. Um, where the first time you might have to hunt around for it a little bit, but every time it's going to get, that pathway is going to get stronger and stronger. Okay, so um, I'll show you, Leanne's going to hand out a, a handout that sort of has the steps that we use to set these up. So if you need a little reminder, like, oh, how did she do that again? Then you can um, refer to that handout. Uh, but this is what I mean by a uh, hyperdoc warm-up. I can open this up here. Um, so what I've done is, um, well, this kind of grew out of uh, a need of mine. I'm always teaching in different classrooms, so sometimes the students are arriving there before I arrive there. And they're sitting there waiting for me. And um, I don't want them sitting there for five minutes of dead time while I'm getting my slideshow set up and, um, or writing, some, writing a warm-up on the board or connecting with a kid that's been away or something like that. So I set up this warm-up document so as soon as they um, come into class, they have this bookmarked on their Chromebook, because it's very nice, they all have a Chromebook. Um, they have it bookmarked, they go straight there, and then they collaborate with a partner on uh, working on the problem. Um, so to bookmark it, I send them the link to it, and then right here, they can just click this little star, and it shows up in their menu bar up here, so that they can just easily get to it each day. I've got it all linked up so I don't have to think about it each day. Um, and it just gives them something to do while I'm getting ready. Um, so I can show you, like on Tuesdays, Tuesdays it takes me right to this uh, website where they can actually interact with it right straight on the website. Um, and I put a list, if you're a math teacher, I put a list on that front page of the math warm-up sites that I use um, to make, to, to access to do these. So every Tuesday is one of these estimation 180 things. I just keep it simple. Um, on Wednesdays, they're going to go to a site called Solve Me Mobiles. Again, they just play that online. Um, on Thursdays, Thursdays I've created a little bit differently. I've just taken this image from the Would You Rather website, and there's a Would You Rather math. There's Would You Rather other things too, I think. Um, so it's just something that they haven't, we haven't necessarily done a problem like this. Um, it's, there's multiple entry points, so they, they could know how to calculate the unit cost of the honey, or they could just sort of make an educated guess. They're gonna discuss it with a partner and see what they come up with. Um, so I will show you how I put these together. So I've just got a folder, this is how I organized it. I've got a folder that has, I don't have a Monday folder because the Monday link is always the same. We do a number talk on Mondays. Um, so I've got a folder for each day and then I've got my main hyper, hyper doc, which is just a fancy name for, uh, fancy name for a document with a bunch of links on it. Um, so I've got my hyperlink document there. Um, you'll see I don't have Friday uh, week four linked up. So I would go back to my folder, I'd find my, I've got these all created already, 
Friday week four. Now what I like to do is I like to publish this page. So you could just give them a link to a Google Doc, especially if you want them to interact on it somehow or do something on it or make a copy or keep it. Uh, but I just, I like to publish it so that it comes up as a web page instead. Um, I just think it looks cleaner. It doesn't have all this at the top. Um, so again, I just got this image from the Which One Doesn't Belong website, and they're going to have a chance to talk to their partner about it. So to publish it, um, I go under File to Publish to the Web. It just gives me a link. I'm going to copy that link, and then I'm going to go back to my, I don't even know where it is anymore, right here, to my document. I'm going to highlight Friday, I'm going to click this little insert link button, paste it in. Okay, and then what also what I do is then I publish this document and give the students the link to the published document. Um, again, I don't know why I do that, I just think it looks cleaner. So I click publish to the web, I get the link, I copy it and I share it with them however you'd like to share things on the website or on Google Classroom or however you would share that with the students. Um, it automatically updates so I can make changes to my original document <laughs> here uh, so it'll automatically republish that or you could uncheck that if you want to work on it and change it without changing the thing, whatever. Um, I can stop publishing it. You could require them to sign in, be signed in on their WRDSB account if you wanted, um, and then you're good to go. So that's basically a quick overview of that. Does anybody have any questions on that piece before we move on? Pretty straightforward. Um, okay, so then Leanne's going to talk about, and again, like I was going to say, that, um, that kind of gets at that very practice piece because I'm just giving them a question. They increase in complexity throughout the semester, but it's, it doesn't necessarily relate to what we're doing that day. Um, it doesn't necessarily relate to what we did the day before. It's just a chance for them to do some problem solving, some collaborating, use some skills they might have uh, built up at that point. All right. I'll post down all these extra pages for you. There we go. All right, so on the other side of your page is the homework self talk So Leanne's going to show you. So we'll talk a little bit about that. that. Um, so we had some goals for the homework self check. For our grade nine applied math classes, we noticed that, well, we wanted them to do homework. We wanted them to practice and take time to reflect and think about what they learned in the day. Um, unless we checked their homework, they weren't going to do it. But with our MSIP school in only 60 minutes, we didn't have time to go around and check their homework every day. So we thought, well, let's maybe try to make a Google form, turn it into a quiz, and let that be the homework. So we put the practice problems and we embedded them into the Google form as a quiz. And we share that with students. And we ask that they, every day after they're done their learning, they go and they click on this link and they complete a quiz. So the way that we sort of designed it, if my kids go to the website, they can see each day, you know, here's the lesson that we did, and then here's our consolidation, which is a little note we take, which we also use um, Google Docs for that. And then here's the self-check. So this is a little link that they click on, and it's going to open up a quiz for them that they can use to check their learning. As Carolyn said, we, we are trying to make it as difficult for them as possible to get into a group because we want them to be constantly thinking and on their toes. So Carolyn's warm-ups start them out with a topic that has nothing to do with what we're learning that day in particular, but it does key directly into what we're doing in the curriculum. So proportional reasoning, things like that that are important to us for their thinking. Then they go into the lesson, which could be about integers, it could be about um, proportional reasoning as well, it could be linear relations, it could be angle properties, a Pythagorean theorem, or rise over run, uh, geometry. Every day is a different topic. That's how we're doing with the smiling. And then their quiz, the little self-check that they do, it'll have maybe three or four questions that relate to exactly what we did that day. So if we studied some um, equations, they'll have a few equations. But as the course progresses, we started adding questions into the self-check that would relate back to old problems. Okay? So if I show you an example of that, Right at the beginning of the course, on the third day, 
we made this little self-check, solving one-step equations. Uh, just to get them warmed up and get them used to it, they will go through and click on their options for each of these. And on this day, we were, you know, right at the beginning of the course, this was the only thing we had covered. Okay? But some time goes by, and then we cover equations again in a different context, but we make it a little more challenging. But there have been 20 days in between the first quiz and this quiz, this is day 23 in cycle one, the numbers are more challenging, we learn how to use algebra instead of inspection, and once we finished some of the problems that relate directly to what we did that day, we get to look at problems that relate to topics we've studied throughout the rest of the course in those in 20 days in between. So where Carolyn's warm-ups get at key concepts that you could do at any time, these homework checks do relate back to topics that we have covered in those 20 days but they don't know which topic they're going to get. It's not, you know, it's fairly randomized. So then they can do, here's some direct and partial variation, here's some um, scatter plots and making a hypothesis, and then, we've, you know, gathering up some like terms, things like that, okay? So as we move forward, we keep on interleaving and adding in problems that relate to old content so they don't forget. And so what this allowed us to do was a few things. We wanted to be able to check in on them and see how they're doing with this homework. So we can see which students did their work, right? So I've got their um, email addresses or user IDs going across here. And then I can see their scores on the first and second quiz for cycle two. So five of eight, one of the seven. So I know she struggled with this problem here. I can see that the first day we did well. We got five of eight, six out of eight, eight out of eight, eight out of eight, and so on. The second day, we struggled a little bit more. One, six, seven, four, five, three, four, one. So then I know that this topic we maybe need to spend a little more time on. So in addition to being able to check their homework, I'm able to use this as information to do that formative assessment so that I can make adjustments to my teaching along the way as well. So we did that. So today, instead of doing day three, which was a new topic, we did some more equations from day two because I could see that they were struggling with that. So when we look at this, uh, we can track it different ways. So it will feed all into this one document um, when you set it up, and I'll kind of show you how to do that. So each quiz that you do, you can have it feeding to a separate tab in the same spreadsheet, and then we can see also what time of day they're doing their homework. So some of them are doing it at home at 7 o'clock at night. Others are doing it during MSIP, during Block B. And then I can also see students who will repeat it, right? So students who take multiple attempts to try and get perfect. So you can get a lot of information about what your students are thinking and how and when they're doing their work um, by gathering it this way. Now we use some multiple choice questions and some open response questions. And so you can set up the Google Form quiz any way that you want. Hands up, who's used a Google Form before? Just a few, okay, so maybe, do you wanna, do you have any questions now first, and I can kind of walk you through a little bit about setting up some of these parameters on the quiz. We're okay. Okay, so when you go to set up the quiz, uh, if you open up a new Google form, you can turn it into a quiz, and then you have these options when you create your questions. So I can just input a question here. I can also add an image and bring an image in and use that image to create the question. For the options, you can choose multiple choice, but you can also do short answer, paragraph, check boxes, pull down menus. You have a lot of different ways to gather that information from them. And then when you go to select your options that you want for your answer, say you do multiple choice like we did, you can also add images in for the multiple choice, which is new. We were excited about that because EQAO, um, often their ABCD options are graphs, tables, charts. They're visuals that the students choose from which of the following is a linear relation. And so now we can swipe in and have those images in here too. Are the images only for the multiple choice or are they available in other options? I wonder that because I use multiple choice all the time. If we change it to check boxes, yep, you can still put them in for template. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can sort of design these tools and be able to access more information about your kids and how they're doing. Um, questions? Do you know with um, when you're setting this up, I don't even know if this really relates or not, um, if there's a way of having it so that they can't open other tabs while they're in the Google form? I don't know about that. Karen? No. Okay. 
because I, I realized like I made a test for my kids and then they could open up the Google Classroom and it was just copy and paste. They copied straight from the Google Classroom oh, from lesson, lesson. The lesson and then put it straight in. So every kid got perfect because it was just oh my goodness. So that's a, <laughs> a downside. Of I'm sure there's a way that's gone through that learning curve. Right. I'm sure there's a way. Right. Are yeah. like struggling yeah. with that piece. Yeah. Like there, there would have to be a third party. I don't know. Yeah. 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 yeah that I'm not sure about because this is our you know self check and the homework just for the grade nine applied little right. thing here and there. The stakes aren't high. Right. And they know we're not marking it. That we're not counting the marks. Right. They know we're looking at it. Right. And that we will say, hey, what happened? You didn't get yesterday's self-check done. Yeah. Um, and so I think the stakes aren't as high for them yeah. to, to cheat. That is right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. Other questions? Cool. Are you going to talk about how to get all the information from this and put it together? Pull it all together, yes. So one thing that, that we did, I mean, you can see when you click on the responses, like at the top here, then you can get a good picture of the distribution if you ask questions, um, what the scores were. So, you know, most people had a six, seven, or an eight out of eight. You can go student by student right here in the actual Google form, and then you can analyze it question by question, what percentage of your students got each one correct. And so here we're looking, and everything looks pretty good, and then, yeah, still looking pretty good, except this one. I can see that I'm down to 51% got the right answer, and there were there, this was a big misconception, a quarter of my kids. So now I know that this type of question, I should work on that with them, you know, maybe at the start of class one day. And so you can get a lot of information through here, but what, what we do is we send the information to a single spreadsheet. So we made one called Cycle 2 Self Checks, and then when you click on these three little dots here, you can choose your response destination.